Hello and welcome to the Federal. Imagine traveling from Chennai to Bangalore in just 30 minutes. While that might seem like a dream, it is possible with Hyperloop, a futuristic transportation system. IIT Madras Avishka team has received a major funding from LNT Technology Services to develop this Hyperloop technology. Today I have with me Bharat Bhasa to explain more on this. He's the team lead of the project. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you so much. So to begin with, could you please explain in simple terms what is Hyperloop and how does it work? Yeah, sure. So Hyperloop is a new transportation mode which, which, which was introduced by Elon Musk, uh, who is the CEO and founder of Tesla. And uh, the idea was of, of having uh, a small metro-like pods which can travel at around 1,000 kilometers per hour or even more in vacuum tubes. So the Hyperloop idea is basically a combination of a maglev train and, a, and an airplane. So in maglev trains, we are actually uh, getting rid of the friction by having the magnetic levitation. So the ground friction is, uh, is gone. And uh, you, in airplanes, we are traveling at very high uh, altitudes, at, like where the air is very less dense, because of which we can reduce the air friction as well. So if we combine both of these effects and uh, like we can actually get get the most of both of these effects in a hyperloop system. So that's how uh, we project around uh, 1,200 kilometers per hour of of uh, travel speeds in hyperloop. So the Chennai to Bangalore corridor can be traveled into just 35 35 minutes. So in simple terms, hyperloop, uh, yeah, is is that. So can you tell us more about your project? Like what stage is it at? How is it progressing? And also, yeah. how are you planning to use the funding that l and will be providing you? So to begin with, uh, our team started off in 2017 uh, to participate in the global competition at SpaceX, the Hyperloop Pod competition, which was organized by Elon Musk. And it happened for around four to five years. So our sole aim during that year was to like participate and go to SpaceX and uh, see how, how actually Hyperloop can be uh, built. So until now we have developed uh, two Hyperloop pod pr prototypes, and uh, the one, the first one, which we took to SpaceX. So at SpaceX, we were the only Asian finalists among the top 22 teams all over the world, and uh, they finished some of the top 10 uh, globally at SpaceX. Then the next, uh, next, the, the next pod which we made last year in the month of uh, in the month of May to July last year that we made it for the European Hyperloop Week competition, uh, which was going to be organized, which, uh, which was organi organized in Spain. And uh, uh, our aim was like was to develop a scalable pod, a scalable Hyperloop pod. Uh, scalable in the sense, whatever tech we are using in, in our Hyperloop pod can be actually scaled up and, and have on a full scale Hyperloop pod as well. So that was the idea. Currently, uh, with the developments that we made last year, we actually achieved contactless propulsion and contactless braking, uh, basically reducing the contact between uh, like the pod and the track. And it was a major achievement. And over the past two years, we have also been researching on something known as Hyperloop infrastructure. So uh, we have seen that the Hyperloop infrastructure, the vacuum tube, which is required to run a Hyperloop pod, that actually costs a lot of money in the, in the initial phases. So we thought, why not innovate on that as well and try to see whether we can reduce the cost by having an innovative design. And uh, following that, we have been we have patented our Hyperloop tube design in the month of August last year. And the same design uh, which we have which we are developing, we are going to construct a 500 meter long vacuum tube in the IIT Madras satellite campus, which is going to be constructed in uh, the youth. And uh, so through this competition, we we want to be the world's largest Hyperloop testing facility, uh, which will be at par with the Virgin Hyperloop facility, which is in USA. And around this, around this Hyperloop vacuum tube, we also want to organize global Hyperloop competitions, bringing in uh, corporates and student teams from all over the world on a common platform in India. And through this process, we want to make IIT Madras the global center for Hyperloop development. Uh, so where do you think India stands currently in terms of, you know, feasibility for this technology? So I like to just add that this technology is not more than 10 years, 10 years, 10, 12 years old. So currently we are not very much behind the other countries 
So in Europe, as well as in America, there have been some developments. Uh, so Virgin Hyperloop is there. Other companies are there who are developing Hyperloop uh, at a larger scale and have, have been receiving fundings in large amounts. But uh, in India, we are having a small section of the student community who is trying to come up and build something small, small scale. So um, yeah, in, in, so the, the two main components are levitation as well as vacuum. So in India, we are not that much advanced in levitation systems. We do not have a maglev train in India. Also, uh, vacuum systems is something that is very crucial. So the right amount, the correct type of vacuum pump which we require, all those things are still under development. So uh, as our, at Avishka Hyperloop, what we are trying to do is we are trying to form an Indian Hyperloop community through which we can propagate the idea of uh, like Hyperloop development in India itself. So instead of us going to abroad uh, for competitions, we'll flip the narrative. We'll, we'll actually call people from abroad to India to participate in competitions. And that's how we want to proceed forward. So what about the cost factor? So once this Hyperloop mode of transport is launched, would it be an expensive mode of transport? Yeah, so that's a nice question. Like the, the, the question which might come is if we already have high speed maglev trains and if we already have air trains, then why need a transportation mode, which is, uh, I mean, the combination of both and, uh, and how do we estimate the cost? So the thing is, uh, since there has not been much uh, ground research done on Hyperloop, like the actual technical research in India, we cannot uh, properly predict. But what we can do is we can build an energy model and uh, we can try to find the operational cost of Hyperloop, of a Hyperloop run. So let's say from Chennai to Bangalore, Hyperloop corridor, what amount of energy is used in the power travel in maintaining vacuum and uh, in maintaining the air pressure inside the, inside the pod, the atmospheric pressure. So uh, these combinations, this energy calculations we are do doing right now. Uh, so as I told, one of the major advantage is that we the energy consumption required in Hyperloop is way, way much lesser than that in maglev trains. Because maglev trains have to uh, also like oppose the aerodynamic drag, which is not the case in Hyperloop. As well as they do not have to get, I mean, oppose the friction, the ground friction. So uh, like both of these effects actually help us in reducing the energy consumption. And, then, and that's how we can actually reduce the overall operational cost as well. On the other hand, uh, we can also install solar panels on the Hyperloop vacuum tube. And basically we have done some rough calculations and have, we have found that the, the actual energy that, that the solar panels can provide is actually more than what we even require. So it's, it's basically carbon neutral, so to say. So the cost or the overall cost of Hyperloop travel will be, will be like much, much lesser. And, uh, and also we're reducing on time. So what will be the benefits of this Hyperloop for the common man? And how long will it take before it becomes a common mode of transport? Uh, there are a lot of advantages of introducing Hyperloop. So currently the freight network that is there, uh, let's say through, through trucking or uh, trains, uh, it, it has a very low average travel speed of, let's say if you want to uh, like transport a 20 feet long cargo, then it requires a lot of uh, like the, 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 the average speed of this cargo travel is very, very less, uh, but Hyperloop, it can easily reach 600 to 800 kilometers per hour and a traveling cargo at that much high speeds can reduce uh, a lot of, like a lot of time. So we can even transport perishable goods from one city to another city. And uh, that can actually save a lot of cost. Uh, apart from that passenger travel, of course, like, uh, from Chennai to Bangalore, 30 minutes is, is a huge achievement and it actually connects the city centers of both the cities. So uh, we do not have to go to the Hyperloop, I mean Hyperloop port, like it's actually in the center only. So Bangalore is actually, very, the, the, the airport in Bangalore is very far from the, the, the city center. The, the travel time is actually reduced as well as we're reducing, we're actually reducing the cost of cargo transport as well. So it is definitely beneficial. And talking about how much time will it take? Uh, so uh, I think uh, around one or one decade or two decades ago, we we, had, we didn't even thought think about bullet trains and high speed rail. But right now they're in development. So we never know. Uh, Hyperloop is one such technology where if if uh, the government as well as corporates put enough resources and interest, 
we can actually achieve this in around 8 to 10 years time and that's what our goal as a team is uh, we want to develop a hyperloop uh, for india in the next 8 to 10 years thank you so much for sharing your insights with us uh, for more such interesting stories you can always log on to the federal.com Thank you.